as a health research organization, we want to see more organizations start like ours. We'd love that. The more health research organizations there are, the faster we're going to find out how we can really truly end aging. Welcome to the Seamland podcast. I'm your host Seam Lund, and today our guest is Alan Graves. Alan is the CEO of DoNotAge.org. DoNotAge is my favorite longevity supplement company that provides research-backed compounds that extend health span, such as spermidine, NMN, TMG, calcium, alpha-ketoglutarate, etc. For this month, you can get a free copy of my book Metabolic Autophagy if you use the code SEAM for making an order at DoNotAge that includes NMN. All you need is either the NMN capsules or powder in your purchase with or without the other supplements. So head over to donutage.org and use my code SIM, S-I-I-M to get 10% off all the Do Not Age products as well as the Metabolic Pathology ebook. Hi Seem, thank you for having me back. Yeah, it's uh, good to talk with you again and it's been almost like, like a half a year or something since the last time we talked. And since that, uh, there has been a lot of like New research coming about, uh, coming out about uh, the different compounds that uh, you provide, and uh, yeah, like before we get into that, uh, maybe like you know what's been new with uh, Do Not Age as a company as a whole, and you know what products have you been uh, releasing recently? So yeah, there's there's a lot of new things going on at the moment. So I think last time we spoke about the spermidine, we're we're looking at launching a version that's gluten free because obviously at the moment we're sourcing it from wheat germ and there are still some people that don't like consuming wheat. There's some celiacs, et cetera. So mm. yeah, we are looking at trying to do that. And we hope that within just a few months, we'll be able to make that a reality. So that's one thing we've been working on. Obviously there's a ton of research, which is what I work on most of the time now. Um, I'm in the Middle East at the moment, uh, having meetings about that. So that's really exciting. I've just finished a month in the USA as well doing uh, similar things so there's lots of research in the pipeline um, we can go into that during the during the podcast if you want um, and what else oh we do, we do have a new product coming out as well so uh, obviously you know that the vast majority of research doesn't result in an ingredient that we launch um, because we only choose the ones that have the highest health impact and we decided on collagen peptides because it's absolutely proven in humans the benefits that collagen peptides have so that one will be coming out probably at the end of august of 2022 mm, that's uh that's pretty interesting there like a collagen is like a powder or uh, capsules or how do you think about it yeah so unfortunately with with collagen if you take it in, in capsule form it, it doesn't get absorbed in the same way so it does have to be a powder for that one which i understand it's tricky for some people because people like the ease of a capsule, which I completely understand. And if we could do it, we would, but obviously we have to look at the health outcome as, as the main priority. Mm. Okay. Well, that's awesome. I do like collagen as well. And uh, I mean, the powder is, uh, I guess it's uh, fine. You can mix it with stuff. Uh, yeah. And the spermidine, like, um, does, does it have like a celiac response uh, for people who are allergic to uh, wheat, even if you have like a, uh, if, in, if it's like, you know, just sourced from wheat germ, if you take it as a supplement, will it still have like any effect? Yeah, that's right. So obviously a celiac is, is a, an allergy. So yeah, definitely don't go near anything that's come from wheat germ uh, for that. In terms of people with like a slight gluten intolerance, they tend to be okay with our current spermidine product, but obviously it's still something they have to be wary of. So we're just trying to create it so we can cover all bases. Mm, gotcha, gotcha. Um, and where, where's the next one come from? Like, what's the other source that you choose? Uh, so we're, we're working on that at the moment. Um, but again, anyone that's on the email list, will get all the information on there, but, uh, we, we don't want to say too much before we, before we don't want to run before we can walk. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, I don't know what it's going to be like, but if I were to guess then like spirulina or something like that, <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> okay. We shall see. <laughs> um, all right. Um, yeah. Like, um, are there any like new studies that have uh, come out, let's say, I mean, like the biggest one probably that you, um, the biggest supplement that you probably have is like uh, NMN, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, um, that depends if you're looking at all time or whether you're looking at the last few months. So the last few months, it would be Cert6 Activator, but all time, it would be NMN, definitely. Gotcha. Are there any like new uh, studies that have come out about... Maybe like, uh, yeah, like NMN and NAD as a whole, like have. What have you yeah. Said? So there's new studies coming out all the time. I think last time we, we spoke, which was probably January of, of this year, 
Um, we, we mentioned that there was a lot more human trials in NR than there was NMN. Well, that's now the, you know, the balance is starting to tip, which is fantastic. So we're seeing more and more in vivo results in humans. Um, there's new studies coming out all the time, and it's nice to see what we already knew being proven now in the clinical trials. Um, I think the most recent one we've seen is the one that made me smile because it proved that NMN prevents senescence in retinal cells. So, you know, we see NMN boosting people's eyesight. And if you listen to our previous conversation, one of your questions was around um, what, what are the benefits that people taking NMN might notice. And I said, well, one of the common themes for in terms of feedback from people taking do not age to org NMN was that our members were seeing an improvement in their eyesight. And then now we see the studies. I think David Sinclair tweeted about it recently. Um, yeah, now we see the studies proving that out, which is fantastic. Hmm. That's, that's, yeah, good to hear. Or I've, you know, seen like the animal studies before as well that it helps with eyesight or reversing like this myopia and uh, yeah. de decline in eyesight with age. Uh, but uh, senescence, so NMN, could it be then like a potential as analytic that uh, helps to clear senescent cells or is it too early to think about that? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, again, we, we, ought to be, we have to be careful what we say before the science has proven it out, I think. And obviously some people use the terms senescence and aging interchangeably as well. Mm, right. That's true. Um, any like other studies about NMN or NAD or like, you know, you pro what about nicotinamide riboside, NR? That's also like a common. Yeah, so there's, there's, there, there are regular studies coming out about NR, obviously, again, because of the Chromadex link. Um, but I mean, the ones that I tend to know more about in general are the ones, obviously, that we're responsible for. So, for example, the CERT6 activator trials that have been going unbelievably well. Uh, we have one trial being run by Professor Vera Gorbanova, which showed a huge reduction in the frailty index in just a few months. And it got all of us very excited. Um, again, always nice when clinical trials prove what we already knew. And Professor Gorbanova spoke to me, she rang me, it must be a month ago now, just over a month ago, where are we? Yeah, maybe six weeks ago. And she, you know, she doesn't get excited very easily. And she was super excited and said, look, never seen results like this before. I think we should put this, we should start another trial and put this into cancer patients. So people that have already gone through chemotherapy and the, what we believe if we're correct, is that the recurrence of tumors in the group that are taking CERT6 activator will be a lot less or hopefully non-existent compared to the what the control group. Um, so obviously, if that proves out to be true, then it's going to be huge. Um, and that trial is re just started recently. So very exciting. Okay, well, that's uh, awesome. Like, uh, you know, the CERT6 activator, you, no one else has that. I mean, like you're the only... Yeah. Uh, company that actually has a product like that, that act, that has compounds that activate the search six in humans. And, yes, uh, exactly. and uh, like, that's, you know, very interesting in that sense that it's like a novel, let's say a supplement or a, not a drug, but like a supplement. Um, and, but what is like, uh, besides, you know, activating search six, like what is like the mechanisms or why does it work or why does it, what effects does it have in humans? Well, I mean, I can tell you about the feedback more than I can talk about the mechanisms, because obviously we know about what CERT6 does, uh, but in terms of feedback, which I think is tends to be more important to most consumers anyway, because they want to know what result it's going to have to them rather than rather than the features. They want to know the benefits. Does that make sense? Right. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, the biggest one we get is energy. People say they feel much more energetic, um, less lethargic particularly obviously in, in slightly older population, sort of 40 and above. Um, and yeah, the, the main thing that we get is people say, I, my wellness feels improved. So obviously we do a lot of phone calls, right? So people have been taking the ingredient for six months, we'll give them a call and we'll say, hey, how are you getting on? Just want to check, make sure everything's okay. How much have you been taking? Ask them about their lifestyle and things like that as well and diet, et cetera. And then we're, we're noting down all that feedback anonymously, obviously, but we're noting down all that feedback so that we can get an understanding of how people feel based on it. So that's something that the office in the UK deal with. Um, so they'll be calling out from there. Whereas what I deal with obviously is more the research side, but yeah, so an improved sense of well-being, which is basically an overall feeling of feeling better 
Um, and like I say, now the studies are going to slowly but surely prove out what we already know, that it's a hugely beneficial ingredient. Mm, great. Well, CERT6 as a gene itself, uh, belonging to the sirtuin family, um, it does have like a, I guess the main effect is like DNA repair, uh, that it helps with DNA repair and... Uh... Yeah, I think, I think that's going to be the, the uh, most likely candidate for most of the benefits, in my opinion. So because of DNA damage is, is the sort of upstream cause of a lot of downstream symptoms, right? So the, the DNA repair and also the fact that it's a huge anti-inflammatory and inflammation obviously exacerbates most health issues, doesn't it? So between the DNA repair and the anti-inflammatory, that's gonna, I, I believe that's going to be the main mechanisms for CERT6. Mm -hmm. how, do, how does it, uh, I mean, cert are also... Um affecting NAD metabolism and like overall energy production from that. So uh, is there any like link between this uh, CERT6 and NAD? Yeah, I mean, so sirtuins are NAD dependent. So if you don't have enough NAD, then the sirtuins can't run properly anyway, which is why as we see the increase in popularity in CERT6 activator, we're also seeing an increase in people using NMN because they're boosting their NAD, and then they're activating the sirtuin as well. So uh, I think it was David Sinclair that said about the, the fuel tank and the accelerated pedal, right? Mm. Right, yeah. Um, maybe let's, you know, before we carry on, let's maybe like explain like a brief for people who may not have heard about these things before, like maybe oh, okay. like a simple overview about NAD and uh, yeah. Sure. So nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, now you can see why we call it NAD, um, is a coenzyme in every cell of your body. Without it, you would be dead very, very quickly within a matter of seconds. Um, it's responsible for, I think, over 400 processes in the cell. So you can see, it, again, it's about that whole upstream, looking at the upstream causes of issues. And as we age, it's been proven that NAD levels decline quite drastically. And this has then been linked to lots of different age-related diseases as well. So the theory is if you boost the NAD back to youthful levels, then the rest of the body can function as it did in our youth. Um, and we're, what we're seeing is that does prove out to be true with people that are taking NMN and or NR. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that, yeah, these, um, most of these uh, longevity supplements, like they will have like this health span effect that uh, they will just improve. They will improve your uh, functional health or like, functionality uh, as you get older, like they will prevent or yeah. slow down some of that uh, age related decline that occurs. Like with the CERT6 activator, it's gonna help with the brain side and neurodegeneration and protection against um, maybe oxygen stress. And uh, with yeah. NMN, it's gonna be related to like uh, met energy metabolism and things related to that, like your metabolic health and insulin sensitivity, which has been proven in humans to improve insulin sensitivity as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think obviously there's not going to be these, <laughs> or it's, it's not going to be like these supplements that are going to make you live like a hundred years old or uh, 150 years old or something like that. I don't think there's any, like you, any supplement out there that we know that could make humans live until 150 years old or something like that. We don't have like any supplements yet, but, there's, but... I'm, I'm quite, I'm quietly confident about the two that we've just been speaking about NMN and CERT6 activator, just because obviously I get to see the aggregated data, um, from, right. we've got what, over 100,000 members now all taking these, and most of them take those ingredients, right? So yeah, I am quite yes. confident that it will extend it, but we're not going to know for obviously a very long time, right? Because, you know, CERT6 activator is only what, a year and a half old. Uh, NMN's only been popular for three years. So the actual uh, full scope human trials, aren't gonna, we're not going to know for many decades, right. but I am, I am quietly confident. Mm. Yeah, I guess you need to just have all the other uh, things also uh, done perfectly, like the exercise and the diet and the sleep and uh, the stress, yeah. and, uh, those kind of things. Uh, so yeah, I mean, they, they can be for sure, like they can be um, additional boost in helping you to reach that optimal state, but uh, the foundation has to also be there, like the proper diet. Oh yeah, definitely. So I, I think, I'm assuming most of the people that work but your channel will already be looking after things like diet, sleep, and exercise. But it's interesting you mentioned stress because that's one that people tend to miss out. And it is it does have a really 
huge negative effect on pretty much all conditions, um, especially those linked to aging. So if people can try and find ways to control their stress, whether that's just through meditation or however they want to do it individually, then I, I would definitely recommend that because that's something that I'm still working on now. Um, and I think the vast majority of people could do with uh, less stress. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I agree. And um, when, when I think about it, you know, in my own head, and uh, bit, bit, which is based on like, you know, what I read and what I've uh, researched and uh, everything I've exposed to, then yeah, I think that aging itself also goes down to a lot with like just stress and damage, like the higher amount of like physical as well as, you know, physiological uh, damage and stress your body experiences throughout your lifetime, then over the course of time, like the body just slowly wears down and uh, and uh, the ability to yeah. recover from it. it's also gonna go down so it, it all it has to do with a lot just mitigating the damage as well as recovering from it and uh, with you know when you're young your body can very easily recover from that and you're gonna be fine yeah. because your body's own ability your energy levels are high and all these antioxidant defenses are also running properly so it's very easy for you to bounce back fast uh, with age you're just the ability to boost those uh defenses goes also down and that's where you start to like th there's going to be like eventually this kind of uh, tipping point where you reach that your body isn't able to recover and rebound from that damage and everything else you experience and that's where you get all these age-related diseases and go down like this uh, downward spiral so it's a lot of kind of balancing the damage all aging is really is damage isn't it so mm -hmm. it's uh and like you say the, the things that protect us from damage for example the seven sirtuins that we find in humans they're extremely active when you're young and then they get less and less active over time. So boosting them back to youthful levels is, is what we aim to do. Um, it's the same as things like CAAKG. Um, obviously it's the, the, the calcium version of AKG, which is again, a very important molecule in the body. It gets, it, it reduces over time during aging. And so what we try and do is boost it back to youthful levels. So a lot of what we do is, boosting things back to youthful levels or reducing them back to youthful levels if they get too high. So for example, CD38. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, funny enough, like exercise, for example, which is very beneficial for anti-aging and longevity, it kind of has a lot of those same effects as these uh, compounds. Um, or like, I mean, it does. Raise energy it does, but we, we yeah. find, we, we do find it is in a, it tends to be in a smaller way though. So for example, exercise boosts your NAD levels. Obviously, it does a hell of a lot more than that. But just taking that one example, taking an NMN supplement is going to boost your NAD levels a lot more than exercise ever could. So I think that's where we come in with our interventions is where we where we see we can add value. And like, you know, you might be able to exercise your way out of bad NAD levels until you're 30, say, for example. Um, that's just a figure plucked out of the air, by the way. Um, but over time, you're not going to be able to do that. If you were, then we'd see people that were 90 years old that still had perfect NAD levels because there are older people that have done those kind of exercises all the time. Mm. Um, unfortunately, that's just not the reality, which is where we have to come in with interventions. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Uh, like supplementation has a very good place um, that it helps you to get back on track fast and uh, mm. helps you to get out of the trench <laughs> in that sense. Like if you have low NAD, then it's very hard to get, you know, out of bed or to start to start exercise. Um, uh, whereas if you, you know, use something that kind of shortcuts, shortcuts that a little bit to help you get mm. back, then obviously it's going to be a good way of going about it and uh, helps to, you know, it's the same with like, you know, like treating a certain nutrient deficiency, like, if you have a severe magnesium deficiency, then you're maybe not able to sleep properly and you're stressed out all the time, anxious. But if you take a supplement uh, that fixes it in the short term, then uh, you're able to you know, actually fall asleep and recover and make sure that you don't go into this, you know, vicious, vicious uh, spiral or feedback loop of uh, not, not sleeping well and being stressed out about it and et cetera, and not sleeping well about it either. Yeah, and I think, I think magnesium is something that it's a very important one. It's a good example. But at the same time, it is possible to get enough magnesium from your diet. You would need to eat, you know, a lot of salads, um, but it is possible to do. Mm. However, things like NMN, for example, you know, there's no food. I mean, 
which food has the most NMN in probably broccoli, I think, from memory. And you'd have to eat, you know, so many kilos of broccoli every day just to get that amount of NMN. Um, yeah. So again, that's where that's where the the intervention comes in. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think it's like yeah, cabbage, tomatoes, and uh, broccoli or something. But yeah, like, yeah, I've got, I've got but, edamame beans in my head as well. I think that was one of the ones that was high in NMN. Yeah, so like, but it's very small, like literally, like. Yeah. Yeah, like zero point two. High, high comparison to other foods, not high as in high enough to make a big difference. Yes, yeah. So yeah, I I think yeah, like the it's especially great for um, taking whenever you're like I personally take it mostly when I'm um, let's say under a higher amount of stress or inflammation coming from the environment, like whether that be the sleep side that I didn't sleep well enough or I changed time zones or. I need to yeah. have like better antioxidant status and um, just uh, defenses against any kind of oxidative stress. That's where I find I think the best so best fit for NMN and these energy boosters uh, comes from. So let's briefly mention like the NMN um, quality as well because I think that's still worth mentioning. Uh, once again, we did talk about it in our blast podcast, but uh, like most of the NMN that you you can buy like Amazon or something. They don't even have like any NMN at all. So uh, yeah. whereas your do not age uh, has actually the NMN in high quantities in their product. So can you like briefly talk about it? Yeah, sure. So it was, it, we, we started it off when we uh, back in 2019, um, obviously part of being in this market is knowing what's already available and part of our mission to only provide either things that we can increase the quality of or reduce the price if the quality is already the best it can be. Then uh, and I think we spoke last time about with the NMN, the reason why we became known for it is because we did both. So we reduced the price and increased the quality when we first um, launched. And obviously as part of that, we have to go and see what's already out there and test it and see what, and I was shocked. I was really shocked. I knew the supplement world was murky, but it was, you know, there wasn't a single one that had what it contained. There was a couple that had some, you know, 60%, 80%, but they were claiming 99%. And then there was the vast majority, which didn't have any NMN in whatsoever. So obviously I reported it to Amazon, spoke to them about it, and they couldn't, they couldn't give a monkeys. They were not interested at all because they were just selling, someone was selling a product on their marketplace, which means they get a cut. So they don't really care about the quality of that product. Um, so, you know, I'm not saying that we will never go on Amazon, maybe in the future, do not age.org will have a, an Amazon shop. I don't know, but I think people should just be wary from it for myself. For me, I would never buy anything from Amazon that I was going to put into my body just because I know how Amazon works and I know exactly how it works as a marketplace. And I think most consumers don't, they think because it's a large company, it's one of the largest companies in the entire world, they, they, they assume there's going to be. Uh, safety nets there that just aren't there so mm, gotcha. um, and then from our perspective that's why we just test at every stage and it's why we introduced the do not age quality guarantee so the purity is guaranteed to your door wherever you live in the world um, because we don't just want to that there, there are some other companies that will make the product test it as soon as they've made it and it's 99 percent pure but then it sits on a shelf for six months and then gets shipped to a consumer and then by the time the consumer gets it, it's not 99% anymore. Um, whereas, obviously, that's why we guarantee that purity to the door. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's really unfortunate. Um, obviously, you know, most of the supplements, I think they'll, you know, probably get shipped from like some China or something like that. And uh, yeah, there, the, you didn't even know like if how quality they will send you that product. So you, as like a, whoever like, like manufacturers or white labels any kind of supplements then it's mm. kind of yeah up to them to test it first obviously but i think like many people may not have the ethics or uh the principles yeah. to exactly. actually you know change anything about it so even if they see that their product doesn't have any nmn then they will still sell it uh because it's wanting to make it like a quick buck or um yeah just to... exactly and i think that's why as a health research organization, we want to see more organizations start like ours. We'd love, we'd love that. Um, because you know, what are we now over three years old and we don't have, we still don't have any 
competition, which is not a good thing. It's not a good thing at all because the more health research organizations there are, the faster we're going to find out how we can really truly end aging um, and stop all these horrendous age related diseases. So I think the old style supplement company just out to try and make a profit, not putting anything back into the research, which is, you know, that these companies need to realize that without the research, they wouldn't be able to sell the supplements they're selling. Do you see what I mean? So yeah. for, for me, it's, it's a bit of, it's a duty to pay back into the research. Yeah. And how many like research or like, or how many studies do you actively have going on right now? Oh, uh, we have, we, we have a lot all the time. So, um, there's multiple and they're all around the world as well. So I think there's, there's one in Singapore at the moment, looking, using our CAA KG, looking at the effect on the microbiome. Obviously we already know about the anti-frailty. And I think last time we spoke about the reduction in biological age on that, uh, on that study. Um, and so now we're looking at the effect on the microbiome. Um, we've just invested in a, we funded a rapamycin trial. So I hope, you know, that's going to take a few years to find out the results, but that's obviously exciting because that's something that people talk about in the industry. Um, and again, that was something that we're trying to encourage others to do as well, because, you know, if, if, if it turns out that rapamycin is beneficial, like I don't take rapamycin myself because of the immune suppressant, um, concerns because it is an immunosuppressant but that's not to say that we haven't seen some good results so far in some of the animal models so we funded that rapamycin trial knowing full well that if it comes to fruition and it shows huge benefits in rapamycin we're never going to be able to provide that ingredient because it's a pharmaceutical right you see what i mean yeah. uh, and again so that's us trying to set an example of Mm. trying to do the right thing rather than the profitable thing if that makes sense yeah i think like a lot of people would be excited if there was like a commercial rapamycin <laughs> that you could yeah. sell in form in there <laughs> but uh yeah i mean obviously yeah like it's a more dangerous not a dangerous but like you need to be more careful with that kind of um which is an actual drug like rapamycin is an actual drug uh, compared to like supplements um yeah but yeah I, what do you think about itself overall like you you're not taking it uh, would you ever take it or Oh yeah. I mean, if, if, if the science proved me wrong, then 100%, I would, I would take it, you know, um, there's, I didn't used to take collagen, for example. Now I told you about these, these, you know, the collagen peptides, because sometimes when you look into something enough or enough new studies come out, you can kind of say, okay, I got that one wrong. And, you know, having not been able to change your mind is a very, very dangerous position to be in mm. because especially with science, because, you know, things are always evolving, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, I, I would, I would take it if, but like I said, I think, I think dosage is going to be the key with rapamycin. That's what it looks like yeah. because, yeah. you know, suppressing your immune system straight away sets off alarm bells. Right. Yeah. Um, but like I say, some, some of the results in the animal models have been impressive. So we shall see if that carries over to humans. Mm, yeah. I think, yeah, like, you know, periodically, every once in a while using it can be good, probably, like in certain situations, but not chronically, mm -hmm. because I mean, if you chronically suppress mTOR with rapamycin, then um, that's going to like slowly uh, waste away your muscle mass and strength as well. So, uh, yeah, you do need, you, you need those things as well for aging, anti-aging. Yeah, uh, definitely. Kind of balance of how, how much mTOR you want to suppress and when you do it etc i you know if i i'm not taking it either i'm you know i'm not planning to take it in the future but if i were to be like super geeking out on uh, constructing the best anti-aging routine or strategy then i would probably include rapamycin in there in some doses every once in a while so uh, but yeah i, I haven't thought about it <laughs> that much yeah uh, like the newest product uh, that was released the last time was a sulfura boost uh, which is a sort of yeah so for a fain, um, booster, basically, um, like what's, can you talk about that? Like what's the uh, research behind that? Yeah. So I think we've, we've already seen a few people in your, uh, from your audience taking so for boost, which is great. Obviously I know lots of them are taking cert six activator. Um, I don't know if they're doing it because of the last podcast we had or whether it's because you're taking them as well. I don't know, but either way, they're starting to see the benefits already, which is great. Uh, it's another popular one. So for a boost. So we know, it activates NRF2, protects cells from oxidation, activates glutathione, helps with uh, liver detoxification, and it can help prevent DNA damage, which, again, as we spoke about earlier, is 
quite important. Um, and there is some evidence that it deactivates carcinogens like benzene and stuff like that. So um, that's, I think, there where the main benefits come in from um, sulfur boost. Gotcha. Yeah, and the glutathione, right, as well from that. Yeah, like I say, it increases the glutathione, um, which is super important and in the brain as well. So if anybody's got any spare time, go and watch Rhonda Patrick talking about that. She's she's very clued up and I think she's a big fan of uh, sulforaphane boosting products. Mm. Is she taking it or uh, do you know? Uh, I don't know, but like I say, uh, there's a lot of high profile people taking our products. Um, I think the one she talks about is called Prost, Prost, Prostophane. I think she, she's probably taking that one. Uh, but yeah, we've we have a lot of celebrities taking our stuff and they'll always use a you know, a pseudonym. Or if they don't, they make it clear over email that they don't want anyone to know they're taking the ingredients. Um, not, not because they're worried about us using it from a marketing perspective, but because... They don't want people know knowing that they're taking things to try and stay young <laughs> yeah, right. because of how that's just how celebrity works i guess gotcha gotcha um have you changed any of your uh, supplementation recently or um well in the very recent weeks i've been mega dosing on nmn because of I, I mentioned about my i'm in the middle east at the moment i've just gone across america so it was i flew from where i live in the south of europe to London and then from London I went to Florida from Florida to Texas uh, Texas to Montana um, you know Alaska and then uh, wow. back to Washington Washington State and then from there to here in the Middle East and then I'm going to go across another time zone tomorrow and I'm going to Dubai so I, yeah it's, because I've got all these meetings all over the world it's it's great and I love talking about the research and and this is I, I'm doing the things I love but at the same time, the body isn't, wasn't designed when airplanes were a thing. So, um, uh, yeah, I've been mega dosing on NMN. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll look ahead to where I'm, the, the time zone I'm going to, and I'll take the NMN as if it was like 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. in that time zone to try and get, because because obviously it's so intrinsically linked with the circadian rhythm. So, yeah, yeah that's what I'm and it's working it's been it's been working very well and obviously i've added collagen relatively recently as well so i'm uh, i'm fortunate i get to get my hands on it before the public <laughs> yes. that's awesome yeah yeah it's kind of i don't know ironic or funny that you know you uh, travel all the world while preaching or you know researching about uh, longevity and anti-aging etc while damaging your body <laughs> quite silly. yeah yeah I, I think that quite a lot you know especially when i'm struggling for sleep because i'm a big proponent of quality of sleep um and i also just find that after you've had a good night's sleep you feel so much better as well and obviously it's very important from a gym perspective in terms of the rest and repair um but yeah so i, I do sometimes chuckle to myself about that as well it's uh you know i'm t telling everybody to do one thing and doing another one so it's not it's, it's not it's not very fair but you know sometimes you have to do things for the greater good so right gotcha um with that NMN, um, you're probably also stacking it with uh, trimethylglycine, TMG, right? Yeah, that's right. So when, whatever I take in NMN, I'll take that at a one-on-one -on -one ratio with TMG. Um, that's, again, just to provide those methyl donors. Mm. Uh, you're taking TMG as well, that's right? Yes, yeah, I'm taking that. Um, I would take it even if I weren't taking the NMN. But, yeah, because uh, it has a ton of benefits. Yeah, yeah we're seeing that a lot as well. Um, not just with the people from from your audience, but all pretty much all of our members, we see some people will, will even take a higher dosage of TMG compared to the NMN just because of the other benefits that TMG can have. So that's always it's always good. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Especially if you're eating a high protein diet, I think that it's uh, beneficial to take the TMG to help to lower the homocysteine uh, from the high methionine intake. Mm. Yeah, kind of uh, worth it for that reasons as well. I agree. And uh, any CD38 inhibitors? <laughs> that, uh, yeah, yeah, so for, for a while, I was actually taking 1,000 milligrams of apigenin, um, and I've reduced that just to, to 500 milligrams uh, recently. But yeah, I'm, I'm taking 500 milligrams, so that's two capsules of the uh, pure apigenin product. Um, I take that every day, so it's, uh, it's definitely a good one. I, I tend to take that later in the day as well, just because of the kind of relaxing effects that 
Apigenin can have. Mm, gotcha. And the reason for that is uh, to uh, inhibit CD38, which is this uh, consumer of NAD. Yeah, I mean, I would probably say control rather than inhibit because CD38 is necessary, but it's like I was mentioning earlier, you know, things like NAD, um, AKG, they decrease as we age and CD38 increases and it's an NADase, which means it feeds on NAD. So the, the more it increases, the less NAD you have, uh, which is obviously an issue as we know. Mm. Yeah. And... Uh... High amounts of CD38 is considered or thought to be, you know, one of the biggest reasons why this NAD levels decrease with age. So, yeah, precisely. So it's it, you know, when it comes to NAD, it's always best to take that two pronged approach. So control the CD38 and boost the levels of, of NAD itself. Mm. Uh, apigenin is one. Quercetin is also, if I'm not mistaken. It is, but similar to in being a senolytic, it, 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 it's uh, relatively. So if, if fisetin is this good at being a senolytic, quercetin is this good. Okay. And it's the same way as, uh, you know, if apigenin is this good at, at controlling the CD38, quercetin is this good. Quercetin is a fantastic supplement, um, mm -hmm. but it tends to have a small effect on many different pathways rather than one large effect. Right. Gotcha. Um, one supplement. I mean, that you do provide is Reservatrol, uh, but uh, personally, uh, I'm not taking it. And uh, I think that I, I can explain like why, or you know, one of the biggest reasons is probably that I haven't seen like enough evidence hum in humans, especially that it would help with, you know, having like an anti-aging effect. Uh, and when it comes to like, you know, exercise performance, then that actually has been also uh, seen in humans to have like a negative effect on vo2 max and um, i think it's also going to have like a negative effect on like muscle hypertrophy and muscle strength side if you're taking it around the training so that's the reason why i'm not taking it um, any thoughts yeah about and that? i think yeah i think the, the thing with that is like when i spoke to david about it obviously david is probably the, the biggest the most famous proponent of um resveratrol um he was he was adamant and, you know, I've looked at the studies and it has been proven that it does activate sirtuin one. So if you believe in activating sirtuins, then I believe you should believe in resveratrol. But I also understand that everything's not going to be for everybody. You know, there are other people that have said they don't want to take that product. Some people we have to take it every other day because there was some of the, some of the rodent data showed that every other day was more, even more beneficial. So, you know, everyone's going to be different, aren't they? But I, I still take my resveratrol every day. Hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, maybe like I think yeah, like it, it's the same with rapamycin. Like it obviously has like some benefits uh, for mm. cases, and I would you know, I'm not like so like I don't think it's going to be harmful if you take it every once in a while. I think it has like a net positive effect if you take it like maybe like I don't know once a month or something um, for an average person. And the same with like resveratrol as well. Probably like I'm not, I don't think that you should be like a daily supplement. Uh, personally, for me at least. And uh, but I think yeah, like maybe a few times a week or a month probably has its benefits like there are uh, the way i look at it is there are like days where i'm like being quote unquote anabolic and uh pro, yeah. like pro muscle growth and pro hypertrophy and recovery and uh, strength and those things which you know in excess can be problematic for aging but in moderation yeah. are also you know very good for aging like you want to have muscle and strength for aging as well uh, and on the other hand there are days where i'm like more catabolic <laughs> more like these longevity pathways that are not necessarily going to help you build muscle but they do have like this benefits on autophagy and dna repair and yeah so i i i think i do a similar thing but i do it daily uh -huh. so i'll have a period in the day where it's about building you know i'm eating something probably high protein um that's usually in the morning for me and then i'll be taking the, the relevant supplements for that and then maybe i'll have a period of 12 hours where i'm not eating and i'm just i might, I might take xyz mm. um so i think we're doing similar things just maybe on a different time scale yeah i do oh, well i do it on a daily basis as well like you know there's the fasting window and there's the yeah. eating window um but on a, like a macro scale i do it also like a, like a few like pe longer periods like maybe like a week or yeah. something like where i'm deliberately more catabolic or deliberately more anabolic and like i think that's you know i think that's a key to this seeing progress in all the things that you do 
especially like in training as well as like the maybe anti-aging side if you're trying yeah, to yeah. like you know do everything at once you're trying to build muscle at once and strength and uh trying to improve your biomarkers and and you know have like do or do all these different kinds of anti-aging interventions then you know you may like end up spinning your wheels a bit uh, but if you are like cycle then then that's i think that's a key of, uh, oh yeah yeah definitely the body either wants to be building or repairing so yeah uh, you have to you have to choose one rather than being one foot in both camps yeah again i can i'll, I'll maybe like briefly give my supplement and this routine which actually people can also check out from my like supplement list at cmon yeah. uh, slash supplements where i just list out all the supplements and when i take them as well so like in the morning you know after waking up i'm in this you know fasted state and i'm already yeah having gone through a lot of the liver glycogen and my body's in this state of semi-ketosis and uh i mean all these longevity pathways also turn on you know like dose dependent manner after that fast or the longer you fast so like you know 12 hour 14 hour fast then i'm kind of wanting to push the gas on the longevity pathways like these things that put like this small amount of stress to the body and actually turn on these anti antioxidant defense systems and uh, cell recycling so all the nmn and uh, sulfur boost uh, calcium alpha beta glutarate and uh, bisetin, uh all those uh, supplements will be that I consume in the morning usually to kind of help mm. to drive those pathways or support them and uh, around like midday where I'm starting to work out soon and then I'll like switch it a little bit like I'll incorporate some aminos and even like HMB and those uh, supplements that help to like slow down that <laughs> process a little bit to slow down the catabolism and switch switch more towards this you know muscle repair and uh recovery and maintenance and then in the evening after a workout then i'll you know i have like a protein shake as well before the workout but uh, yeah like yeah workout and afterwards in the meal i'll have like you know food that has protein uh depending on the day like i may have like more plant-based more animal-based higher carb lower carb that depends on the day but yeah like after that is where i'll like switching over from this complete catabolic side into like this anabolic mode if that makes sense yeah no it does make sense what, what's your uh, routine like on that sense at the minute it's all over the place <laughs> um but yeah usually it's uh things like nmn in the morning and then obviously you've got the uh the morning workout so if i'm gonna if i ever miss a if i don't get my workout in the morning then i usually don't end up doing the workout um be just because of how my diary and how my schedule is so and, and even nowadays because i'm always in hotels the workout has to change anyway depending on how good the gym is in the hotel um and then obviously you, you start taking your supplements so i'll take the resveratrol then um i'll take the fisetin um i'll take the quercetin there's a few floaters as well that you can kind of take at any time. So things like the hyaluronic acid, I don't think that matters too much. It doesn't seem to make too much of a difference to me when I take it. So I'll take that a couple of hours after. Um, after that first meal as well, there will also be, uh, sorry, just before it, there'll be spermidine. And then just after it, there'll be cert 6 activator. Um, and then I'll usually eat a few hours later. And then my eating window will, is at the minute, it's been a, a bit stretched, but it's usually four, four to five hours. So have that big protein meal straight after the workout. And then a few hours later, have another meal, make sure there's plenty of veggies and things like that in there. Um, also some protein as well. And that's when I'll take my next lot of Certix Activator. Cause again, I take quite high dosage of that. Okay. Um, and then that'll be when I take my vitamin D, vitamin K and magnesium blended product as well. And then later on in the evening, then I've got a couple of other things that I take um, and a few other products from other brands as well. So, um, and I, I, at the minute, I'm still trying to work out where my collagen fits. So I'm taking it at different times or some days I'll miss it because I've got, you know, 10 minute window until my next meeting or until I've got to go somewhere. And because it's not as easy as just putting a capsule in your mouth and swallowing it, I'll be like, oh, I've got to get stuff out, you know, pour it in and all that kind of stuff. So I definitely need to get into a routine with that, but that's something that do not age that all preachers anyway, is a massive, having a routine is huge because it means that you won't forget to do it. You know, the amount of people that I've spoken to that have said, oh, I've stopped feeling 
X, Y, Z benefit. Can you help me out? And then one of the team or myself will, will speak to them individually. And they'll say, oh, yeah, but, you know, I've been struggling with it. I missed it for three days and then I missed it for another four days. And then I forgot. And then it was, once you're out of the habit, it's very difficult. Um, and so, yeah, I'm not in the habit with collagen yet because it's so new and because I've had this crazy schedule. So hopefully within a few weeks, I'll be more settled down and be able to get into a routine. Mm, right. Yeah, I think collagen is great. Like uh, when I've looked at the research, then I think that if you took it before a workout and then did resistance training, then it did improve uh, bone density. Uh, but oh, okay. but generally, like it kind of, you know, go specifically to those uh, targeted joints uh, and uh, but if you take it like uh, overall and you know whenever then it still has like a positive effect on um, the ligaments and tendon recovery as well so yeah I think you know whenever you can is probably best it's just not gonna yeah. be it's just not gonna be like you know quote-unquote anabolic <laughs> like like collagen doesn't like uh, it doesn't have leucine and doesn't have other essential aminos that you need to trigger protein synthesis uh, so it's yeah, not yeah. going to be uh, useful for that, but obviously it's useful for uh, the joints and ligaments and tendons. Um, so yeah, whenever you, you know, call it, if you eat collagen post-workout, then you would want to make sure that you have like the other uh, aminos present as well, whether from a meal or like an other uh, shake, like a whey or yeah. other protein. Yeah, I mean, ho I'm hope hopefully most people that are working out, particularly with a strength workout or with a very intense workout are going to be consuming some calories after that anyway I, I would hope so yeah of course i think so um yeah any any other like new trials something that you're working on um well there's like i say there's always lots in the pipeline um we're, we're testing out something called urolithin a at the moment um but again that's uh you know watch this space kind of stuff um and then there's also something called astaxanthin as well that we're looking at so um, yeah, that's... We, think, we, we think they're going to be, we think that we're, we're confident about both of them, but you never know until you get the results. So, um, you know, I'm hope, hopeful that before the end of the year, we can have another ingredient that's going to help people. Um, I'm actually taking astaxanthin at the moment. That's one of the things I mentioned I'm, I'm taking, uh, from another brand. And I was, I have seen some research, but I've also heard lots of people tell me that their sunburn is reduced when they take astaxanthin. And obviously I'm in a lot of hot countries at the moment, so I'm taking it and I'm not sunburned yet. So, uh, mm. not sure, not sure how clinical that trial is, but yeah. it's, uh, it seems well, to be, it seems to be working fine. Yeah. Well, funny enough, like, uh, like your NMN levels also determine whether or not you get sunburn or UV damage. So there is like last year mm. I saw a study in mice that, uh, the NMN was like the determining factor whether or not they got skin da damage from the sun. So like with high level, basically like, you know, when sun causes UV radiation or causes uh, oxidative stress and that damage to the skin. Mm. And uh, in order to basically counteract that your body needs, again, like these defense systems and NMN and NAD are, you know, the ones or NAD specifically would be like uh, the one that is like used for uh, counteracting that oxidative stress that you get from the sun as well so. yeah and i think that's like i say about a lot of things that's what happens when you fix the upstream causes of aging the downstream symptoms that are fixed is are going to be numerous you know so so like for example the eyesight thing you know when you take in a man you're not you're not going near your eyes you're putting something into your body but because of that upstream then we see the downstream uh, benefit and it, it sounds like it's going to be the same for uv damage as well mm, yeah uh, i think you know many people know about astaxanthin so it's this like lipid or fat and uh, that is used uh, yeah it does mm. have like a basically protects against uh, oxidative stress in the skin many people have uh, reported that as well but what about the other one that you mentioned the urethan a yeah, so urolithin A is, it, it looks like it may benefit the mitochondria. But again, I don't want to say too much until we know more, because the last thing you want is to get people's hopes up. <laughs> and then obviously the, the, the trial ends and it, and it doesn't work out that way. So yeah, that's something that people can watch this space. Anyone that's on our email list, um, just go to do not age.org, scroll to the bottom, there's a little... Uh, 
box where you can put your email in. Um, the results of all these kind of trials are emailed out regularly. So um, if anybody's interested and wants to know more, that's the best way to do it. Mm, gotcha. Um, yeah, well, where can people maybe learn about these uh, trials or where can they read them? Is there like, does, do, does your website have like a list of all the studies and uh, things that you've done? Do not age.org, the, the website is the kind of been the consumer face inside of it. So we do have a science page where you can look at some studies uh, based on mostly based on the ingredients, plus things like fasting and exercise and stuff like that. Um, but we are looking at the end of this year, probably to update the website and start having like a research page, just a, just a page to do with the research that we've directly involved with, because when, like I say, that, that do not age.org was set up as the consumer facing page. So we're letting the public purchase the ingredients that we're working on. Um, and then now I think now we're building up this body of work. We should, we're about ready to have a page that's dedicated just to the things that we've done ourselves. Um, so for example, there'd be a lot of cert six activator stuff on there. Mm. Um, that's to give one example. Yeah. The, the page is very, um, you know, comprehensive in the sense, or you have the references all listed out there. So it's, uh, yeah. dot org forward slash science. So you can check. Yeah. Out. Yeah. That's right. Size, autology. Uh, NAD, CD38, sirtuins, GMG, resveratrol, quercetin, yeah, like all everything is kind of listed out there with the references to studies. So if you already plus, yeah, if anyone's got any specific questions, um, then they can just email hello at do not age org, and then obviously one of the team will be able to get back to them. A lot of people do email in and say I have X Y Z uh, disease or condition. What should I take? Um, you know, please still email us if you, if you want some advice but you know we can't give medical advice so the, the result the response to those kind of emails is always speak to your doctor you know because we, we're not allowed to sort of treat or diagnose um but the science page should answer a lot of things for a lot of people uh, and if anyone's got any specific questions hello at do not age dog and uh, do not age uh, where do you deliver uh, worldwide right yeah, that's right. So we, we, the mission for the organization is to extend healthy lifespan for as many people as possible. So in order to achieve that, we need to make sure we deliver to every country. Um, and recently, we've introduced hubs as well around the world. So to help people uh, reduce the taxes and fees. So for example, you know, where are the most common areas, USA, European Union, Australia, anybody that purchases from us in those areas doesn't have to pay any taxes and fees. Um, and that's the case for the majority of the world there's a few countries where there's nothing you can do about it so like india for example if you import stuff to india there is a, a small charge um, but the vast majority of people don't have any taxes and fees to pay so we're always trying to remove as much friction as we can and make it as easy as possible for people to get their hands on these beneficial ingredients mm. yeah i'm also like very um, excited about uh, your company and the products that you provide and it's very like you know good to have like a transparent company that actually, you know, uh, yep. out or make sure that the ingredients are what they say they are, as well as uh, base base their uh, the products themselves on uh, the science themselves. Like you have a huge research team behind you, and uh, yeah, make sure you actually test your uh, products basically in studies, which is you know very new for a supplement company, but it should be like somewhat like mandatory almost. Yeah, and I think like I say, what what I'm trying to do on a personal level is be the example Like I want there to be 10 do not age dogs in, in a few years time. You know what I mean? And like, so that we actually have some genuine competition. And I mean, we would just collaborate with them. You know what I mean? We would collaborate with them and say, right, you share the results of your research. We'll share ours. Let's all, cause we're all working towards the same thing, right? We all want to solve the complex aging problem. Um, so the more resources are, going into that pool, the faster we're going to get there. So, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, yeah, people can check it out at do not age.org, but uh, where can people learn more about you and your work? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really do social media or anything like that, but um, maybe in another six months, we can have another podcast and I'll have some news because I've just started working on a project. I can't reveal too much, but um, there's lots of exciting things in the pipeline. It's something I'm doing from a personal perspective rather than a do not age to perspective. So, uh, yeah, we can, we'll be able to talk about that next time. 
and that means people have to stay subscribed to your YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Uh, well, it was great talking with you, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to having like another update, maybe like in six months or so. Yeah, perfect. Thanks very much, Seem. Keep up the good work. All right, that's it for this episode. As a reminder, you can get the free copy of my Metabolic Autophagy ebook if you use the code SEAM and buy NMN from donotage.org. So head over to donotage.org and use the code SEAM to also get a 10% discount. Other than that, thanks for listening to this episode. Stay tuned for the next one. Stay empowered.